Welcome to a brand new episode of The Cooligans. I am back at home and you know why if you listened on Monday but your boy is still recovering from the 19 okay we don't want to get flagged by some weird websites uh no I'm, I'm cover still recovering from COVID I'm doing all right uh but I am excited to be joined again by the homie of CBS Sports Golasso attacking third the one and only Christine Cupo. Cupo, how are you doing I'm I'm great. I'm still COVID free. Thank you for posting up at home and exactly. not infecting me. All right. This is uh, <laughs> I, I I have the I have a little I'm like a little bit sweaty because uh, I'm you know you're still recovering and stuff. I had a little bit of a fever, but this is I have. You say that you're recovering. I think I just make you nervous. No, no. This is the thing. This is the thing. I I have a little uh you know I got a little paper towel to dab uh to dab my sweat. <laughs> Your brow. I'm I'm looking like you know uh one of the kings of comedy like an old black comic on stage you know <laughs> sweating like crazy uh you know how it is because they got to bring the heat at all times um but i'm excited uh, about today because uh i mean just from uh, monday show to today just a lot's happened i mean we we always expect uh some just entertaining matches at the euros in copa america wherever u.s open cup who cares we we, we know uh the soccer ball never stops rolling uh but <laughs> this we had uh, an absolutely wild wild a uh, few days in 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 Copa America in Euros with wild results and fights in the stands uh we got another malice at the palace uh out in Charlotte <laughs> so a lot to go over uh today but before any of that we have to start with U.S. soccer the U.S. men's national team is now coachless okay they they have uh, they have their facebook status is it's complicated uh, <laughs> <laughs> no no they switched that to single, single already and they are just out there mingling the, um, the plus side is they're already sort of extending potential uh interest offers of interest i'll call them um even at the international level so there has not been a part. U.S. soccer installed a couple dating apps. They're getting back out there, okay? <laughs> They're having a little bit of fun, you know, just just, away. <laughs> just to see who's interested. Who am I matching with? You know what I mean? Just to build, yeah, at least you build your confidence. Go on a couple dates. Uh, no, U.S. soccer right now is doing this, and they're like, we'll swipe through whoever swipes back after the fact. Swi okay. Just swipe and pray. That's it. Um, so, yes, Greg Berhalter has been fired up. Uh, by uh, U.S. Soccer, uh, so now the coaching search uh, begins for for a replacement. But let's uh, yeah, first first thoughts because we <coughs> we heard that there was going to be uh, news on Wednesday. And uh, I mean, if you saw everybody on the timeline, uh, people were like tagging U.S. soccer like, yo, you up? Like, what is what's going on? Why are you? You know, we haven't heard anything. This is leading into the 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 Copa America match like we weren't even exact sort of exactly sure <coughs> beforehand but this is uh we, but we got the news uh, eventually that uh he was let go and we got uh comments from uh from Berhalter himself he made a statement but initial reaction when you heard the news um I, I it was time I think that um he took this team as far as he was capable and with the failure that was Copa America, um, the writing was on the wall, right? I mean, and this goes well beyond the sometimes extremely warranted calls from a very rabid fan base for his head. Um, he did. He had his positives and he certainly had his negatives, but it ran its course. It was for sure um, when he was brought back after the consulting um, for a potential different coach, new coach, who would be the best fit for this team. And he was brought back and the team were in full support of him returning. I think the expectation was, if that is the case, then we should see some sort of positive trajectory here. And it seemed like there was regression. And with that, I'm not going to say seemed like there was, there was regression. And so that is just a data point that I think it was beyond the appetite of U.S. soccer to continue the road with him. Thank you part ways. It's as simple as that. It was 
um, a very warranted business transaction. Thank you, Greg, for what you accomplished. It's been real. It's time to move forward and really grow um, and re-solidify an identity for the men's national. I, I will. I, I my my counterpoint would, uh, or at least the the one thing I want to highlight is like where you mentioning that it was sort of uh, you know U.S. soccer feeling like okay, he's 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 sort of done all he could do. I. I don't think if there wasn't that public pressure from fans just absolutely being relentless about wanting him gone, I don't think he'd be gone. So I, 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 I that look, we can, I we can only speculate because he obviously is gone. But I don't know. I disagree about that only because the fan base has been exactly the same for quite some time where they are incessant. If you spend more than five minutes online, you can see how aggressive some of these. Uh, social posts have been on and just even responses to the poor admin controlling the U.S. men's national team account, which obviously they can do very little. But um, the fan base has been very vocal for quite some time. I would shudder to think that this suddenly pushed them over the edge. But I think Copa America, I think, was just like a glaring failure. You couldn't ignore that. And that was his first real tournament post reappointment where you expect this to be a brighter, more vibrant, talented group of players. And that's not what we got. It felt louder, though, than usual. I mean, I, I you know, we, we even our, our show has not existed it, through that many coaching changes in uh, uh, in the U.S. I mean, the, the it was uh, we, we've had two stints of Burhalter. Uh, before that, it was uh, a Bruce Arena. Um, so, uh, you know, and that was that we knew that was going to be temporary, you know, after he took over for Klinsman. Um, so it, I, we're we're just in a state of social media where those opinions even though they were incessant back in the past had either larger platforms or they were uh, more often or more loud um so i i it's not even I, I give some credit to where the culture of the expectations of of the u.s soccer fan uh, that it's just they're like I, I i think i mentioned this before but like they're just done with mediocrity they are simply saying we can't just be a, a we you know because I think if if the U.S. men's national team had gotten out of the group, I think Greg still has his job. But but to me, that's still a level of, of mediocrity, right? It's just like this was not you know the jokes are now you know now Tim Weah's red card was like people are like thank you for getting that red card because you got rid of the coach that we all uh, we all disliked, and that's. Um, it, it, it's 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 not supposed to make sense, you know, because even we're we're getting comments. Some people are attacking me. They're like, Christian, are you like uh, um, bootlicking for U.S. soccer? And I'm like, bro, I don't necessarily like care if Greg Ber Ber specifically Greg Berhalter has this job or not. I want the team to do well. I'm not supporting him or or I'm not necessarily uh, uh, calling for him to be removed. It's like it's like I, I think there is this uh, like. You know, you you we were both at the event with Tim Weah. Like when you meet Tim Weah and you start talking to him, and he's like, "Yeah, I love my coach. I love playing for this guy." And it's like, okay, well, I'm gonna take that into consideration and not just be like, "Nah, Tim, you don't know what you're talking about. I know what I'm talking about." <laughs> right? You're gonna have a far more measured understanding of what's going on, and I think that especially in social media, the bubble that exists, the appetite is for both ends of the spectrum, but not for anything measured or rational. It's like, it, it just, and I guess that's what gets attention though too, right? That's why there's a lot of like really popular fan blogs because people want that like outrage monster. And that's just not the way that life works. Exactly. This is why I think I'm never going to be really, really successful because I am, I'm too rational. I'm too, uh, it just, I'm, I'm like, no, I'm just, <laughs> there's no, if I, I can, I can rage bait and I can try to get people all riled up, but I'm like, no, it's like th there's a, um, I, look, I don't, Look, I'll say this. I think Greg Berhalter did as good of a job as he could do domestically, right? Winning trophies, bidding Mexico as much as we have. He has given us pride in the region to be like we were always the 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 little brother to Mexico and constantly being uh, uh, humiliated by them, and that completely flipped on its head dominating them where now that program looks like it is in shambles they don't know they right <laughs> and but also it's more a symptom of their program is has been in the dirt 
for a while, then U.S. has suddenly gotten immensely better. So it's two things at the same time. And I think that people want to acknowledge one more than the other. Right, right. And um, so I, I, it's not and it's not even to say like, oh, you should appreciate Greg for what he's It's like. No, whatever, man. Like, like it or don't like it. Like, Saka is going to move on w- whether you li- like it or not. Um, but I, I do think it's uh, I, I think the. Uh, just the discourse has just been a little bit unique and a little bit different than I, than I'm used to seeing. It's just it's a it's a little it's not it's not necessarily like crazy or insane. But now you know the the the, the conversations like the roller coaster of emotions of like Jurgen Klopp is available. Let's get Jurgen Klopp. And already the 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 news is no, he's not interested. Yeah. <laughs> Wapo is like, thanks, but no thanks. I'd like to stay retired for a little bit. It's always, it, it, the grass always looks greener, but you, we have to be like kind of realistic of like, what are the potential candidates? Are they even interested in, uh, in coaching this team? It's not like it's the, the, one of the greatest jobs in the world and, and whatever. Like the team is the team. They are, I, I would say underachieving, but the, it's a, it's a good group to work with. But I, you know, I said this before that the, the players that are playing, yes, they all play in Europe. But they barely get minutes. It's not all of them are not captains. I've already gone, yeah, <laughs> I've already gone through this on at least like two of our shows here about the scant minutes that players are actually getting that everyone has this bizarre idea that somehow playing in Europe is better. Is it better when you're sitting on the bench? You need regular playing minutes and there's no substitute for regular match time. It doesn't matter if you sit there and train all day, all night and kick a ball at a wall. It still is not a substitute for match minutes. So that's priority two. I also think that there's this distorted perception of what our team is capable of with even with a great coach. Like, do you really think that even if we got like, this is completely far-fetched and do not clip this and say that I said this is reasonable, but um, Zizou in here, they're still going to be the same team. There'll be improvements. They're still going to have ceiling. It's not like we get a new manager and magically we're a world superpower. That's just not. If we got a manager that called every of their club, all of their clubs and and called their managers and said, yo, make sure they all get 86 minutes a game. okay?" Uh, and then so if he can convince them to do that, then that's our guy. okay? Uh, that I can understand. (laughs) Yeah, the problem is you need to give 86 quality minutes of each player. And I don't think that those players have 86 quality minutes each in them. So you do you actually handicap your own? club side because you want to help somebody's <laughs> how, team? I don't think how could so. you suggest that it's a handicap okay these are great um, this is the best american talent we have <laughs> right but what does that say about prior generations or the program or what's in yeah, well the, you know what it's interesting because then the, these conversations happen about like um older the old the old guard the older generation i mean a lot of your co-workers the, the brian mcbride the charlie davies the, the clint dempsey's you hear a little bit of like tony Mueller, tony Mueller, you can't leave out tony. Tony, you hear the uh, it's a little bit of like back in my day the old heads the old heads they they have uh, they have a say and they, they're not necessarily wrong about maybe the mentality even though they're playing in europe and they have more opportunities than we did and and are playing at a higher level maybe they don't necessarily have the same mindset or mentality that we did back when we we had less and and i'm not suggesting that i know i agree i wholeheartedly agree because their time in playing right the game was different the game itself has evolved right tactically, strategically, player, what makes a whole midfielder, things like that. Things have changed and they should progress. So that doesn't invalidate their experiences. It's that it's just a different landscape now. And so when you look for, granted, the fundamentals are the same, right? But the way that things have been played and approached, the mentality on it is different. Yeah, it is a, uh, look, I I, I don't, yeah, it's, it's, it's it's a thing where you don't want to see the the older generation pitted against the newer generation because it I, right and it should, they, they should be right because it's it's literally the difference between like a generation before cell phones and like your three year old with their iPhone in their hand like 
not to make that stark of a com- comparison, but like it is right. Like things have changed a lot about the game. A lot of things, not in a good way, but obviously we've constantly been running catch up, especially on the men's national team side for the U S um, with the rest of the world. Yeah. Yeah. I, and that hasn't changed. Yeah. And I, and I think the, you know, the, the, the Tim way red card is, is a, part of the game that is that has nothing to do with like what club you play at whatever it is just simply a main a mentality thing and dealing with uh you know again and players have all had these negative moments um but it is something where like in my opinion the the older generation can critique that those those parts of the game when it's like all right your your mind and your focus is not totally in this tournament and it became and it was a mistake clearly but it became a little that's where the selfishness was at where right. and that, well, that things like that come down to being able to maintain your composure maturity and yeah some of these guys are very young right so it's like even younger than some of the people that are criticizing them when during their playing career. So yes, like you're going to make missteps. The point is you have to learn from them and going forward, I'm sure he has, right? You need to be able to keep a lid on it, especially when it matters most because it's going to impact your team. Things like that are teachable, right? Like whether or not you learn the lesson the hard way, like Tim did, unfortunately, or if you have a really um, impressionable manager, um, able to be like, listen, this team is going to want to sh- like rile you up. When you look at a team like even Colombia and Uruguay, right? Those are teams that are just like peak level shithousery and they're hard about it, right? Physicality, um, the chirping. If you're going to be super reactive to that, you are going to fall susceptible to doing something really, really stupid and they will play to your weakness. Yeah, and you have to, uh, like, and it's it seems... Um not exactly i don't know if it's fair the, is the right word but like greg berhalter in his statement basically accepted the responsibility for the result at copa america and they're 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 you know do we blame tim wea for that moment or do we all do we say and and credit to greg because he took responsibility he basically saying like i did not prepare my players well enough to not for for tim to not do that you know what i mean uh and and, and quite frankly i think it befalls both of them and i do think that as a good manager you should that should be the statement that you make i did not properly prepare them because to do otherwise you expose your player to a lot more scrutiny than they already are experiencing. And your job is to both teach them, but also I think protect them in a lot of ways. You should shield them from the public. Um, so I think that he did handle that well. I do think it's both their fault. Okay. I mean, th- and look, I, as far as uh, Copa America, and you just mentioned uh, Colombia and Uruguay, um, yeah, obviously Canada beat, uh, I mean, Argentina beat Canada, not too much of a shock. Messi gets his first goal. Congrats! Uh, they are they are in the in the final, uh, but that uh, Uruguay and Colombia game, which we all knew was going to be a uh, an intense match. Uh, I mean, that's exactly what it was. It, it was it, so we all predicted it, and it, it, it's exactly what happened. Um, I think the we didn't expect it to uh, go the way it did, especially with um, uh, you know a red card uh, given in in the first half. Um, uh, Daniel Munoz. That elbow was, uh, was like, again, it, it just reminds me, I hate keep going back to the Tim Weah thing, but it's just like, you, you go into these games, you know what they're going to do. You know they're trying to trap you. Right. And- <laughs> but it's impulsive. And once you know that somebody can be rattled like that, like, I used to figure out what really pisses somebody off and do it. I used to do that all the time. If you can get into somebody's head, they're more worried about you than what they're doing next strategically. And so, yeah, it's great. Let them take the red card. Okay. I mean, uh, Christine, don't reveal all your d- dating uh, <laughs> tactics uh, on this show. People are going to be th- nervous. Uh- <laughs> I mean, I also am like a really hard tackler, so you probably want to be on your <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's right. You just be careful <laughs> what restaurant you pick. Uh, I guess you might, <laughs> you might be leaving in a boot. Um, so the... 
Um, look, so look, uh, um, you know, huge win. Um, Colombia get uh, the, you know they they get the goal uh, off the set piece. Hamas again having a, a, an incredible tournament. You have uh, uh, it was uh, Jefferson Lerma who got the goal. But the Bahamas uh, just look obviously a presence in the midfield um, and and, and uh, d uh, delivered the corner. But the, the obviously the big story was just uh, a couple things, right? Darwin Nunez going into the stands, but even before that, missing missing a lot of really really great chances. It felt there were a couple, especially in the first half. It felt a little bit like. He's like, I'm gonna be the hero today. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this today and bring you Uruguay to the final. And uh, I probably missed a couple opportunities to just pass it off for what could be a better chance or maybe even a tap in. Who knows? Um, but Darwin Nunez it makes bigger news because after the game, when there was already a, a, a you know a scuffle on the pitch, it, I, I, something with Luis Suarez and and one of the Colombian players. When is Luis Suarez if, not fighting somebody? If you as soon as you as soon as you uh, invite Luis Suarez anywhere, it's a little bit like um, uh, mind your ears. And <laughs> no, no, you know there's there's a common there's a common like meme amongst uh, Hispanic people where they say, uh, "Si sabes cómo soy, por qué me invitan." which means if you know how I get why are you inviting me <laughs> so, and that's Luis Suarez if like you can't be you can't even be mad at him you gotta be mad we we all have to collectively be upset with ourselves as soon as he they <laughs> as soon as uh, you know Inter Miami heard uh, that they that Uruguay were calling him up which is already kind of a big deal because he, he 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 seemed like he was like Got pretty much done, but you... He's, he's been declining. He's slower. He's Yeah, for sure. Undeniable. Uh, and, and even in this game, he had a couple uh, chances as well uh, uh, to at least tie the game, and, and it didn't happen. But, um, but uh, yeah, at the end, he, he, he goes up to somebody and... Uh, I don't know what he said, but yeah, as soon as as soon as Yeri Mina checked into the game, I was like, okay, we know what's gonna happen. <laughs> these these are the the two. I mean, if it if it was like a, a trash talking UFC match, these are the heavyweights. These are the two best uh, at it, especially in South America. And um, uh, so that's where it kind of started. And then you know, everybody, some people are shaking hands, some people are are clearly upset and arguing. But then uh, for some reason, it, 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 we see in the stands like stuff starts kind of happening and you, you 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 just assume oh fans are probably drunk and whatever and then uh and then eventually you see uh Darwin Nunez and you see uh, several other players uh, uh um uh Araujo is it was there who was injured but he was in the stand people are trying to hold Darwin Nunez back some people are trying to like uh uh, pr protect others and then you then we learn about that 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 was where yeah, the families those were absolutely insane scenes anywhere at any time um but to eventually find out that he was literally diving into the stands to try to protect his family that's a whole other level of discussion that just shouldn't even be a possibility when you just got done playing a Copa America match. Yeah. I mean, any match it, It's all. bad. I mean, when, uh, from, look, I, and I've tried to parse everything I've seen. I'm sure you've looked at all the different videos, all the different angles. I've seen, I've seen a bunch of them. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're all the same. All right. We all want like the tea and whatever. So the, um, the one I, um, you know, the first one, like from the, from the regular broadcast, the, 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 like, uh, sky cam thing is going in sort of into the stands and you see um and you see the players the so it, it just seems like oh the players just ran in and are just fighting folks so it didn't really make much sense but then when you see uh there were there were a lot of like people that we sort of that we know that work in in soccer that were it's sort of in that section so and and they were filming it and they had a very very good look at it that the the clearest video i've seen was from this uh, uh, YouTuber. His name is QC Javi. He is uh, uh, based in Charlotte, and uh, go go follow him. Uh, uh, great dude, and he does. A, I I I saw he was doing stuff at TSD when I was there. Um, and you can clearly hear the uh, Uruguayan player, uh, and I forgot exactly who, but he was one of the guys that that started. And he said, uh, "Familia no, familia no." He's saying 
do, don't do any the, the family here don't fight the, the like the families and th this is where um we learned later like uh, uh that the uruguayan players uh, uh the center back Jimenez uh was was talking about it that they were they were the the uruguayan players family that's the, that was their section and they're being harassed by uh, uh these colombian fans and, and Jimenez said that they were too drunk and whatever i've also heard you know this as well i've heard that the um that the that the uruguayan fans that were in that section as well nobody's saying that it was family but that they were also kind of drawing back and forth with the colombian fans as well uh i'm not here to take sad sides because the violence at any game is horrid and horrendous and should not happen at all the the context i sort of want to talk about this is in the the darwin nunez and the players who are getting in in that moment because the, the, initially when i first saw it i'm like darwin nunez what an idiot why is he going crazy why is he doing he's gonna ruin his career he could get injured he's gonna uh, you know get a, a, a crazy suspension and then when you, you see him holding his his kid on the stands and he's like nearly in tears and emotional, worried that something could have happened to his children or, or, or to his family or to his, his partner. Then I'm at that point, I'm like, I Darwin, like, yo, you got you had to do what you had to do. Like, it's, it's bigger than than soccer. And, and I understand that. Um, but the the other moment as well was before he went into the stands, he like threw a chair at the wall, like where where the where the fans were uh, standing. So it's there was so much antagonism and 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 frustration and anger that it's just it's just a bad look overall and and yeah it, it you you have to put the responsibility on darwin on the uh, uruguayan players that were involved you have to put the responsibility on the, those colombian fans that that threw punch at the dude the guy threw a punch right at darwin nunez like this is just yeah. insane i mean Fortunately or unfortunately, Nunez had about as many punches on target as he did shots that game. So <laughs> that's, a, like, that's a thing. No <laughs> it's that. Um, it, it's but go, go. It just it, the thing is, there's always going to be that element of rivalry and talking as a fan. It should never escalate, ever, ever escalate. I don't care if it's like, oh, you threw a beer on me. Like, there's no reason that anybody should be punching each other, throwing things. It just is probably one of the worst parts of football culture that we have. Everything else is so good. And then there's this massive blemish. Well, this, the racismo, and the homophobia. It, <laughs> The worst part. It's like, let's just get rid of it. Yeah, we don't need it. Um, yeah, it, it was just, uh, uh, it's shameful and it's embarrassing um, uh, on, on all uh, uh, parties. I mean, the, the, the one thing is like, you can't blame Darwin Nunez. Like, you, you no, understand. I, I, I would 1000%, and I said this before we got to, would be rappelling up there like I'm Spider-Man. Like, like, I don't care, but like, if you're going near my family, it's on site. I don't care what the repercussion is. I'm protecting my people. So I get why he did what he did. And I don't think that you would otherwise make that extreme of a decision because you also put yourself in danger, right? Like if there's a number of things that could have gone worse than they did and thank God they didn't, but where was security? Yeah, that, that's really the, the, and this is the, the interesting thing uh, about. No, like this legitimately actually, I'm so angry about this because the chunk of budget that's devoted to security for these tournaments is massive. Where was security? Uh, this is my guess, because I, I was thinking about the same thing. And obviously, uh, Conmebol is running this tournament here in the U.S. This has nothing to do with... So you think they just slipped somebody a fiver and said you got the game? It, it, it feels a little bit like, you know... They they took the the approach that they usually have in South America is like you keep the the fans of the different uh, of the opposing countries you keep them separated they do not interact and you have security guards at that at that border where the, those two uh, the, those two fan bases meet they have a, they have a wall of security you see this with like you know stewards wearing the orange or the yellow. 
and they keep those uh, fans apart. So <clears throat> it's something that it, it sort of felt like Gomebo was like, oh, it's the U.S. It's all kumbaya. Yeah, they don't really do soccer like that. They're not big football people. They're not going to get like that crazy. We're going to let them, you know, they'll be mixed and it's not. it won't be that big of a deal. And for the most part, it probably is not. It's, it's probably not a big deal. But I, look, I, 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 I... The problem is, the precedent for having security like that had been set due to prior world issues with fans and things like that. I don't think the argument should be, oh, it hasn't happened here, or we think that they should be more calm, so we will like just not mitigate that threat. Like that's insane. To right, me. right. Look, I'm, I'm, that's my guess. That's the only thing I can think of. I, I, no, I, I'm, I'm sure it is because we were just talking earlier today about how the women's Euros, the they had pledged uh, 17 or 15 to 17 Swiss franc million Swiss francs for the women's euros, which is pales in comparison to like the 70 plus million francs that they have for the men's euros. Right. And they had conceded and were like, oh, we'll give you four for women. And then you go back and look and realize that there's a significant chunk of the men's budget that actually is devoted to security. But. The, they kept whittling it away because they're like, oh, oh we, we don't need it for the right, right, right. Nobody's going to. Yeah, yeah. It's a look. <laughs> so I don't, I don't doubt that that was the, the logical leap for them or granted wrong, but I'm sure that that was the thought trajectory. Yeah, it, it's clearly, um, you know, uh, irresponsible um, and, and definitely like. You know, I understand. I, I was at the Argentina Chile game. I mean, yeah, there were a, a fair amount of Chileans, but there wasn't. Uh, there's no. It, it was a group stage game. I, I'm not like the context of it is also also matters, right? It wasn't. I didn't. I didn't see anything crazy. I didn't feel like there was any sense of danger. But I, clearly, as you're getting closer to the final, the teams really, really want to win, <laughs> and there's a, clearly a lot of uh, like pressure. So you would think. Uh, you know, from a security perspective, like, all right, let's let's get a couple, let's hire a couple more folks, uh, just to, uh, you know, in, in case anything gets crazy. And then even when Darwin Nunez is in the stand, and if you're watching the clip, there are, I don't know if it's security or or, or maybe team staff or something, but it, it felt like more people were trying to keep Darwin Nunez away rather than keep the people that were like uh, attacking them away from you know what i mean they, they were just like yo the players y'all need to get out of here because this is that's why i suspect it was team staff related because priority uno would be to protect darwin nunez how do you explain <laughs> to like his club like hey um this small thing happened you yeah and, it and it's like the the, the uh, dudes <laughs> Throwing punches should have been, uh, you know, apprehended by security, but there, there seemed to be no one there to do anything. So it's just a, a really shameful situation, and uh, you know, there's a lot of people responsible. My look, my hope is, I'm, I, I'm, I, I saw somebody like either have a cut or something like that. I don't know if it was a, a, a Uruguayan staff member or something, but it, but it seems like there weren't weren't any super serious injuries. Uh, so you, we, we can be like sort of grateful for that, but just not a good look overall. And, and, and it, it, you know, and it, it sort of, it takes away from like what a, a Colombia did accomplish on the pitch. Cause that was remarkable to do that uh, in, in that second half with 10. Yeah, they look great. 10 men. 10 men. Uh, I Honestly, Uruguay just looked really messy, um, especially toward the end, just like missed passes, uh, lots of like bobbles and bobs that you're like, what is this? Like, it reminded me very like U8, like kick the ball into the other teammate's shin. And like, I don't know, it was very uncharacteristic of a team that otherwise looked good. And Colombia, the intensity, it never wavered. Even down to 10, you saw it like continuing to press as a team, not giving Uruguay any space, closing in really tightly, um, getting in behind their lines, like capitalizing on every single error. They had that keeper error early on yeah, um, which, in the second which is, half where it was like. Also weird. He made a, also uh, uh, like a, fl a flubbed uh, clearance uh, in the first half as well. Just like w odd mistakes. Um, I, I guess it was a... Strange to, yeah, very strange mistakes to be happening at this juncture, especially when you've seen them play much, much better as a cohesive unit. I personally, Uruguay, I was favoring them because I'm like, all right, one, I, I love Bielsa, so 
first and foremost. I have to acknowledge that. But um, I was really expecting much, much better than what they were capable of. And to not be able to take advantage of playing against a 10-man Colombia is embarrassing. Yeah, I mean, it's a um, g- given how gr- look how great they look throughout the tournament. Yeah, I mean, if there's anything that can be said is um, they did very well defensively because Colombia has scored the most goals in Copa America. They're, that's their the biggest threat in this tournament has been uh, Colombia scoring goals. So great for mitigating that, but you didn't manage to score a single. Yeah, I, I uh, also uh, Colombia should have had three goals in that game, which is, it was a, a kind of a miracle that they didn't uh, scoring score more, even with ten men. It, it's a it, yeah, it was kind of shocking. I, look, and credit to uh, the way uh, Colombia defended, but it did feel like the you know this game was played in Sh- Charlotte, which is also you're also thinking it's it's you're also thinking like. You know, wherever you Uruguay play, they're not going to, you know, they're, they're a very small um, population. Uh, it's a pretty, it's a very long country, but they have a, a fairly small population. So give, even in the U.S., there aren't uh, so many Uruguayans. There are a lot of Colombians all over the country. And this this I think the the nerves got to them a little bit because they were making uh, just little mistakes and, and not connecting. Pat- Especially when you're up a man, you you should I mean, look at when Panama was up a man against the U.S. I was just like, yo, is this, this are we watching the Uruguay national team? Like, why are they so composed and controlled and they barely let us get the ball? And that that was not the case. So credit to Colombia. No, I mean, even in the dying minutes of this match, like Uruguay sending their keeper up so that they're now up two men for that corner and not being able to do anything with it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah. Huge for Colombia. So we we know the uh, obviously the final is going to be uh, uh, Colombia and Argentina. Uh, so we'll talk about that in a little bit. I want to just uh, just uh, talk about the Euros uh, that we saw, uh, and obviously uh, S- uh, Spain defeated France on Tuesday, two to one. Uh, La Mina Mal was the was the star because that goal um, uh, was which one of the best of the tournament. Phil Foden tried to recreate it, but didn't get his, uh, <laughs> didn't get it in. But Le Mal, um, it, not only was the goal great, but I really loved after the game his his comment because he was saying, um, uh, it basically, habla ahora, habla ahora, meaning like talk now, talk now. Uh, and, uh, and we all sort of knew. <laughs> we also didn't know who he was talking about uh, in Adrian Rabio, uh, the midfielder for France, and and it was just so serendipitous because I mean he's he is the man that he dipped his shoulder, sent him. He was like, "Yo, go pick up your ankles over there. I got something. I got I got a little message for Mike Magnan right now." Okay, it's so long distance. <laughs> I love that French team, but they've really underperformed, and they have been. So it just. Good on Spain. Yeah, I mean, there's been a lot of ride it out. There's been a lot of that through these Euros. I think it's it's every Euros have have largely been just like very unexciting, which has been disappointing. Yeah, I, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say unexciting, but definitely underwhelming. It's like the 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 you know on paper we are told these are the teams that are supposed to be good, and then we watch them and it's like okay, well, what is this? I've been bamboozled. I've been led astray. I'm, <laughs> I, I'm starting to think that just like the frequency in play and the gym impact fixtures are starting to grate on players there's only so much that you can do to mitigate fatigue and injuries and everything else and nutrition and whatnot for pro athletes like outside of just making them not human anymore and like making soccer bots yeah to I, run around and play. i wonder chat gpt make make soccer players uh, if you can <laughs> if uh, i wonder if i mean if, if mbappe didn't get his nose broken would that have made much of a difference because he's he i mean they were i feel like all, the entire french team were not very good I, I it's hard to it's hard to see what we saw like at the world cup you know two years ago to this it's just like it's just like they couldn't figure anything out and and you know mbappe uh, um creating unbelievable chances and then rocking rocketing the ball over the bar just to kind of make no sense so yeah so um so england uh let's talk england netherlands because this was the the controversy here was the penalty that's really what people are still talking about um dumfries fouls um harry kane in the box he's going uh, he's taking a shot the follow-through 
he do- he doesn't hit the ball. He just hits Harry Kane at the top of his foot with his studs. It initially is not called uh, a foul. VAR gets involved and says, hey, take a look at this. I think this might be a penalty. And the ref uh, uh, awards it. I, I am team... Pro penalty? I saw. I say that's a foul anywhere on the field. Uh, do, do, well, how do you feel about it? I I would first of all be the worst referee on the planet. I say that first and foremost. Um, but I, yeah, I I'd say it's a penalty. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it it it, fe- it felt like the you know Virgil Van Dyke was talking about um, you know after the game he said that um, it said a lot that the referee went into uh, went into the tunnel and didn't shake hands uh, with us afterwards. Yeah, I I really it's not the first time we've seen a ref do that, but it's just like very it's so unprofessional. Like I feel like at the end of the day, just like shake the hand and keep it moving. Like there's no reason to create this like dramatic scene where everyone's focused on you going into the tunnel, ignoring somebody. Right, all right. Um, and yeah, I, it's not about you, ref. <laughs> and it wasn't like Netherlands like it got played out of the park. I mean, they had a couple chances here and there, and they just couldn't. Uh, they just couldn't get it done. It's an unfortunate way to lose, for sure. I would be absolutely irate if I was all Holland, and then they did. But they lo- they lost because of the goal from Ollie Watkins, not because of the penalty. In my, in my opinion, I mean the and that was and that's the, the other conversation. Well, I think that that's the argument. Yeah, yeah. right. Is like and, yeah, look the if. If it weren't for the pen, like that changed the momentum and blah, 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 and the refing and the, there's always this. <laughs> Coulda, like, shoulda, woulda. It's the same. Like, I feel like you can copy and paste the same argument over a lot of some of the um, divisive ref calls. It doesn't matter who it is, right? Like, it's constant. I actually get really tired of it because it's constant. Like, it's a ref conspiracy and it's like. <laughs> is it well, is the, it or did your guy just foul somebody the funny thing is with the the the, the ref that um that 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 called this game was the, the the ref that was very controversial because he got in trouble for like a gambling scandal i don't know the details but he was involved in something and he got he got punished for it but he is a a um you know experienced referee who has uh, refed other <laughs> matches at the euros I mean, they need to button it up, right? If you get pinched for gambling, I feel like you should be done. Like your ref and career, especially if you're betting on games that are in your orbit. Yeah, yeah. Like, just it's a strange culture where I feel like the culture is changing of how people feel about gambling. It went from, you know, the peak. Well, yeah, because now you can just go into your phone in an app and gamble. So, like, it's because we've changed it using electronics. Like, there's plenty of people that have gambling addi- addiction and otherwise. We now just put it in their palm when they're bored. Yeah, it's just when, when it comes to the, the actual athletes or people involved in the game that can influence the game that's when i get like all right man like you don't need the money that bad i mean that's that's kind of my my, uh perspective but the um the goal from ollie watkins uh it it had me at least question because i mentioned this a couple weeks ago when england started the euros underperforming underwhelming performances i said bench harry kane We've seen what he can do. Yes, he has a, a moment here and there. But l- l- you have Ivan Tony, you have Ali Watkins, you have these great scorers that can contribute something. Let's just at least see what they got. And then Ali Watkins yeah, comes I in. It's more the, I think it's more the fear of benching Kane. Yeah. Are we treating him? Unfortunately. Is Gareth Southgate treating him? Are we giving them the Ronaldo treatment? And I'm not saying Harry Kane is not like uh, being being selfish in a game the way uh, Cristiano uh, uh, was. But No, but if you're not productive and you still expect to play the same amount of minutes and get the starts and all that, I think that that is a conversation that you need to have at that point. And I don't think that there's anyone that's going to be like, I'm benching him. Because on the other side of it is what if he does perform like he does for a club? And now you're the guy with the egg on your face as a manager because you benched Harry Kane and everybody's like, you know what he can do. It's 
You're damned if you do. You're damned if you don't. <laughs> I'm just, I just like it, given the the way they were performing at the beginning of the tournament. I was just like, how could it? this? Is, it makes no sense to keep doing the same thing and expecting a different result. And it's not to say it's not even a knock on Harry Kane, but it's just like uh, it's just really just to highlight the incredible amount of talent that you have at the striker position f for uh, um, for England. It just made it made no sense. And I also I was ha happy for Ali Watkins to have that moment, and I'm happy for. You know, Ivan Tony to make his penalty in 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 the prior game. You know what I mean? Like this, these are good uh, examples that these guys can contribute. And I love Harry Kane. His statement afterwards, he was just like, uh, you know. Uh, supporting Ali Watkins is saying like you know that that everybody here can contribute everybody here can win us uh, the Euros uh, whether you have one minute or whether you have a hundred minutes uh, you know anybody can make a difference so it's obviously the right thing to say and he doesn't sound like he's a jerk about uh, getting benched or anything like that which is yeah. which is how dare you bench me which is why you should bench him <laughs> because he doesn't he seems like a pretty nice guy about it especially since these other guys can't yeah, contribute he seems like a pretty nice guy about it it's like bench him <laughs> and you're in the dressing room with him exactly swearing up <laughs> all right so they look they uh so england uh are are facing spain in the final uh which i uh, i don't know you're you're on tiktok uh, like i am and so you know the english or spanish uh who do you think is gonna win do you know you know that guy that does <laughs> english or spanish uh which is uh, just a the one of the silliest and most immature trends that is always hilarious <laughs> yeah. if, if you haven't seen it it's uh just look up english or spanish or take out it's uh, the stupidest and funniest thing you've ever seen um so uh they're gonna be playing in the final and we'll talk and so we'll be right back in just a moment and we'll go over uh the final uh the finals for copa america and the euros this sunday it's gonna be or we're just gonna be it's just sitting in one spot watching so much goddamn football it's gonna be great <laughs> All right, let's preview the Euros and Copa America. Uh, the Euros will be happening first. So England against Spain. This is going to be, uh, oh, look, it's going to be an exciting game. I, look, you have to favor Spain. They have looked better throughout the entire tournament. Um, again, this is, is, is I, I wonder, I guess my question, my main question I have is like, how conservative is Gareth Southgate going to be? Because I don't think, there's any issues with uh, uh, Spain really going for it, but how? What? What do you think is the approach Southgate will have uh, on this one? I don't. I think the thing with him is I feel like he doesn't deviate very much, and I think that's part of like his Achilles heel. Um, I feel like he's made some questionable moves already, like this tournament that have been a little bit frustrating, and we have not seen an England side that really. I'd say is to like on paper, you'd be wildly impressed. Like, Oh, those are really good players. They just have been underwhelming. Um, even Kane's been underperforming. So I feel like unless they play like super defensively, you know, that Spain have like a lot more flair. Yeah. Um, I think the, the, as far as the specific decisions, so starting Kieran uh, Trippier, which is okay. Uh, uh, so he's a right, He's a right back playing at left back. He's a right footed. He's playing as a right footed left back. And you and it's so weird that like if you are a person that pays attention to the sport and the details, you can see he's not comfortable. You can you can see in the way he positions his body to make certain passes. You can see the 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 lack of crosses coming from the left side in that first half. So what's been happening the last few games, uh, especially since Luke Shaw has uh, uh, gotten uh, sort of back to fitness, is Kieran Trippier starts the first half and Luke Shaw starts the the second. In my opinion. Start Luke Shaw. He is a he is he is left footed at the very least. He is left footed, and that you can you saw it in in the in the game uh, 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 that they played in the game against Netherlands that there was at least a threat that the the the, the right back on the other team had to be like he might cross it, and I have to be aware of that. And with Trippier, it's like, nah, he, that is not happening. He's not sending in a confident cross or, or it, the ones that, the ones that he did send in, Keeper was like, uh, gimme's, this is all, my, all me. Thank you. Um, 
I love when I have to do analysis and criticize someone for being like right footed when I'm like the most right footed person ever. And I'm like, no, nah, it's not that bad, bro. You can just use the outside of your boot. It's fine. Who? Why do you need a left foot? This is coming from someone who if, look, you, you can completely take off my right leg and that and i will i will <laughs> competently play a soccer game for you i know left foot whatsoever <laughs> but yeah that that feeling of being really uncomfortable is not helpful i've definitely been in that before like i also don't like playing centrally when you feel like a fish out of water and you're spatially off everything else is going to be off and like bless him for trying but it just, yeah, I, I would have flipped that, like put Shaw in. I don't, I haven't seen a benefit yield to starting Trippier. Yeah, like I that. think it, look, it's clearly the, it's, Luke Shaw's not starting because they don't think he can play a full game. So uh, understandable. But the, look, the. Right, but you're going to tell me that you have no depth. There's nobody else that you could have. Which is, that's, and that's on Southgate for like, I uh, well, for picking. Again, the, like, like, I just feel like. Southgate isn't long for this world. Like maybe if they somehow pull off these Euros, but again, like this is their second back-to-back -back Euro finals, which is commendable. But like, are are you going to be able to get this done right now? If I were a betting woman, I'm going with Spain. They just seem far hungrier, more organized, more clinical. Um, in contrast to England, I feel like England have kind of just been like patching it together as they go. Yeah, and then and even the, in their style of play, like just the their two uh wingers and having Lamina Ma and Nico Williams like every regardless of where the ball is on on what side of the field, like those two guys attract a lot of attention. The defenders have to like shift their feet a lot cuz they know they're they're quick and you can see obviously you saw what Lamina Ma was capable of and that that is something that they're like uh, you know that they're worried about. So the the, the for England side like I mean I think the decision to start uh, uh, Kabi Mainu over Trent Alexander Arnold is the right decision. That's it. Trent. I, like again, I don't. I think he's a great. He's good at what he does. He. I, I said this before. He should be the right back instead of Kyle Walker. If I. I th this is the thing. They are not creating enough offensive opportunities because I think the 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 fullbacks are not these sort of great attacking threat. If Kieran Trippier was on playing right back. <coughs> Makes sense. I get it. I think there would be a better, there would be more attacking uh, uh, chances created and stuff like that. But it's just the, the lineup and the decisions lead to this, these performances. They're just like kind of underwhelming. So, yeah, I mean, I feel like all in, right? Like you'd expect more goals out of Foden, out of Saka. There, there's a lot of talent on that team that just hasn't been able to rise to the occasion. Yeah, it's a um, so I'm looking forward to how just I would love like these puzzle pieces. What is going to sort of uh, sort of change? I'm expecting, um, you know, they're going to have to put in an incredible defensive performance uh, to hold off Spain and then to to hold and then look, c can they score a couple? For sure. And also like Spain are much much quicker tempo in their play they're fast right 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 yeah so it's you know it's a little bit of just like setting up roadblocks for them yeah i mean in the last final they played against italy and italy won in penalties but very two two very different types of teams and um you know that much more um sort of attacking threats for uh for spain there's look there's we have we have friends and we have uh, you know and and the soccer community especially the Amer the people who call it soccer community uh, kind of want they don't want they don't want England to win cuz they don't want them to see any joy uh whatsoever my best guess i don't i, I think they're also going to be unhappy I, I i don't see how uh they can figure it out and if they can credit to them i think they they are going up against a much uh not necessarily individual players like uh, but they, they're going up against a better team so yeah uh, and plus the english fans have already began singing it's coming home so they've now just like activated the next so. <laughs> i just i just love how gareth Southgate is just like this terrible manager who's just constantly in finals and really getting the team so far he fails up he's like thank you guys for getting me here and we'll see what happens next and then he so still it's job, gonna be so on we'll on see. the coaches i think on this one to this to, to, to see who wins i mean if uh if gareth Southgate can do it i think that would be absolutely tremendous um
And then he doesn't, and the U.S. offer him the job. <laughs> that's what. That's what I was gonna come home, baby. Come home. We got gotcha. you. Uh, I saw. Yeah, I saw uh, Paul Tenorio on uh, on um, on Golasso mentioned this. I think it was on either Box to Box or something like that. And uh, I mentioned that you know you, they should hire Gareth Southgate for the U.S. job. And there was it was like I I I, I did the Arthur fist. I was so upset that he suggested. That. <laughs> <laughs> I was so upset. There's definitely other other names being thrown around that are more feasible like Eric Renard they should knock on his door and see perhaps what he'd like to do maybe yeah there. that's that's a man I'd swipe right on you know what I'm saying okay yeah. <laughs> man he has we have a manager that would be like Ale, oh, what are you doing that you shit? <laughs> bro my man he has he knows his he has a uniform you know what I mean? He just, he's like, this is what works for me. He's got, the he's got, most importantly, he's got a flat, yeah, yeah, he's yeah. got hair, <laughs> he's got the crisp white button. Yeah, yeah, no, my man is a, we could do that. That would be a nice identity. For a little a passionate message. Frenchman. It's lovely. Okay. And then now the Copa America final, uh, Colombia, Argentina. Uh, after, so, um, I don't know, we may differ here. I think Colombia wins this game. Um, I, and I'll say this after watching, Argentina, obviously, throughout this tournament, after watching them play in person, the the thing I will credit them on is they are, you know, we always everybody talks about Messi and and all their scores and 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 whatever, but <laughs> and whatever, <laughs> Christian is over. I, Messi. <laughs> I, I said this before. I said it, the the Argentina national team looks like. Lionel Messi and 11 N'Golo Kante and, and 10 N'Golo Kante. <laughs> uh, it, they, they, Enzo Fernandez, Rodrigo de, Rodrigo de Paul, I believe, is their best player. He is a, a dog out on the pitch. I'm like, he does not even think about playing like this for Atletico. He, it is, he is a mi I miss, <laughs> I miss him so much in Serie A. Yeah, yeah. He is. I really do. He was great for Atalanta. He is unbelievable and winning balls, challenging for the ball. Um, great passes. He 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 had the assist to uh, um, um, to uh, Julian Alvarez um, uh, the other day. M my man is just in, in, unbelievably intense. The 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 a workhorse on the pitch. But this is the thing. I think Colombia has the same exact. They have four or five of those guys, and I and I think. Uh, Argentina only have like two or three. So I think when it comes to being just an absolute workhorse and a dog on the on the pitch, I think Colombia has more of those guys and it's going to be there's going to be a lot of fouls. You know it's going to be oh, yeah. it, it's going to be a very intense match. It's going to be very physical. Um I think that also just knowing that they haven't they haven't been here since 2001. They are very hungry. So now they've already kind of done the impossible in with that win streak, which is already impressive, right? Like all kudos to Colombia. They have played a beautiful tournament, um, but it will come down to who really, really wants to get this done in the final. I would never, ever, however, discount Argentina. I absolutely, you cannot count them out. They're just they're used, they're very used to this is what I'll say. You know what I mean? Like where you think like, oh, they haven't really been overwhelmingly good, but they can pull it out in the moments when it most counts. And so there's a lot on the line now, you know, and potentially, you know, everybody's looking at this as like, oh, Messi's last Copa America. Yeah. I mean, that the, this, the story, the storyline is there, but. I, I, and look, I think the biggest advantage that that Argentina have is their goalkeeper. I mean, Martinez is Debu is insane. not only is he just he's, good, but there's this there's some. He's just no, he's actually I think insane. <laughs> <laughs> but that's well, that's most goalkeepers, but he's on another level, right? He he not only is he like obviously in penalties, and we know how amazing he is at, at stopping shots and stuff like that. But there's something to where where it seems like teams can't even develop good enough of a mo a moment to even take a shot you know what i mean like there's a there's an intimidation factor that he he's not even seeing crazy shots that he has to stop you see at, at aston villa he at occasion he has to like really go kind of wild and do and, and make a big save and keep them in games but that's not really the case here and and credit to uh, um 
Isn't there recent transfer rumor surrounding him too that he could be like, hey, let me crank my stock a little bit while I'm out here at Copa Maria um, to move away from Aston Villa? Um, but yeah, he's he's excellent. Yeah, yeah, he's been he's been great. So that that's you definitely want to be on his team, not playing <laughs> against him because so I, like he's inferior. It, it's <laughs> like if this game goes. If if it goes to penalties, um, which now in the Copa America final is there is extra time uh, for just just for the final, and then it could go to penalty. If it goes to penalties, like Argentina has, right? So, but this is where I think that, uh, Colombia has the advantage um, in in their set pieces. They have they have larger center backs, taller, the, uh, str- I think physically stronger uh, uh, um, um, kind of midfielders and and center backs. So I think this game is going to be probably won on a set piece. Uh, and and if they do, if the game is won by anybody, I think it's going to be uh, Colombia, and it will be a set piece. But if it's a if it's a dogfight when nobody can really score. I'm gonna. I'll probably favor uh, Ar- uh, Argentina because their go- the, the Colombian goalkeeper is pretty good, but he's not Emmy. Um, and and that's just a. The, I would agree with that. I just I think that um, despite the fact that both teams are incredibly physical, Colombia is more so. So it's like prepare for. But again, like how many more red cards do you want to take? Yeah, yeah. In, I mean, in a single tournament? this is the first uh, Copa America final for Colombia since I believe 2001. 2001 and uh that's yeah they, they you saw when you saw james uh, rodriguez talk about uh, uh, making it to the final they couldn't even he couldn't even get sentences out he was in tears and you, even luis diaz talking about um talking about james rodriguez making it to the final he couldn't even get the words out how emotional how much it meant for uh colombia so it feels like the uh, we all know the storyline for messi maybe you know his last copa america and stuff like that but bro these these pareceros these colombianos they they this is going to be an, an important one for them so i think the story yeah i mean like colombia have certainly been building to this right because they've gotten into the last three semis for of the last four Copa America tournaments. And so it's like now they're finally breaking through. But like how long did that take? Literally their last entrance and win was 2000. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot, you know, and players like Thomas Rodriguez who have was on the outs. He he didn't get called up for like two or three, I think, windows. Um and he wasn't sure what was going to happen. He, you know, I, I told I say, look, I'm an Everton fan. He I'm, you see the shirt right here, man. My man is an Everton legend forever, bro. He should <laughs> he should please come back to my club. Um as we we did you wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> Everton's done a lot wrong, but yeah, that was probably not a notable positive. <laughs> yeah, uh, so uh, uh, an incredible. So the, this uh, Sunday, uh, both finals are happening. They're going to be really, really dope. Uh, we'll we'll be back on Monday, uh, recapping all of them. Um, uh, I will be back. Uh, David Goss will be joining me on Monday, by the way, because uh, Alexis will uh, return the following Thursday. So uh, yeah, so it's going to be. Uh, I'm excited. I mean, we usually don't get two finals like this on the same day on the same yeah no and i feel like even for just broadcasting reasons they try to not do that especially when it's a major tournament but, but no no uh, this is a super sunday Big weekend su- of <laughs> super sunday uh, uh footy so it's gonna be great um as always christine Cupo, thank you so much for joining me uh out uh, uh, at, at cbs studios <laughs> uh, we appreciate it let everybody know just crashing in charlie's yeah again. thank you Chuck. <laughs> uh, let people know where they can follow you and where they can uh, see your work. Yes, um, of course. You can hit me on X at C Coupo, uh, Instagram at Miss Coupo, and then watch uh, Attacking Third uh, every day at 4 p.m. on Golazzo Network. Um, but you can catch me on other Golazzo Network shows. So I pop up everywhere. Exactly. Uh, so, uh, Coupo, always a pleasure. Thank you so much. Uh, everybody else, make sure you follow us at Soccer Cooligans on all social channels uh, X, Instagram, TikTok, the whole thing. Uh, we, so, Again, uh, we're, we're on Mondays and Thursdays. Uh, tune in, subscribe, hit subscribe uh, on on YouTube as well. Uh, also, check out Yahoo Sports for all your soccer coverage, powered by One Football. And also, shout out uh, to Hillary who is uh, producing uh, the show today. Uh, uh, you know, just a uh, one off or whatever. I we we both just met Hillary today, but uh, she's she's crushed. <laughs> she crushed it uh so thank you uh everybody for tuning in we'll be back on monday uh talking about these uh what is expected to be uh very wild finals in euros and copa america thank you so much everybody peace